friends, uh, let's compare today logging frameworks like log4j versus logpack versus log4j2. OK, so let's get started. If you ever want to analyze an issue in production, so I'm pretty much sure uh, how important is it uh, to have a good logging, right? So good logging requires three things. The log messages need to provide the required information to understand what the application does internally. Writing log messages has to be as efficient as possible so that it doesn't affect the performance of your application. And the third uh, and most important thing is you need to be able to adapt the logging details to different deployment environments and uh, situations. So while you still need to decide yourself which logging messages or log messages you should write uh, for each use case, you don't need to worry uh, about requirement uh, like the second and third, like uh, writing log messages has to be as efficient as possible and uh, how you will adapt the logging details to different deployment environments and uh, situations, okay? So various logging frameworks already solved these technical requirements. You need, you only need to choose one of them and use it to write your log messages. To make it uh, even better, SLF4j provides a standard API that in one way or the other is implemented by most of these frameworks that enables you to change your logging framework without changing your code you only need to change the dependency to a different framework that implements the SLF4j interfaces. So let's uh, talk about writing log messages with SLF4j. Writing log messages with uh, SLF4j is very easy. You first need to call the get logger method on the logger factory to uh, instantiate a new logger object. You can then call one of the debug info or warning error or fatal methods on the logger to write a log message with the corresponding log label. Here you can, uh, like in the below example, you can see. So how to call and instantiate that log object, okay? So if these frameworks are easily interchangeable, which one should you use or choose? The answer to the question is not as easy as you might expect. There are several frameworks available that are broadly used in the Java world. So we will, uh, in in this session, we will introduce you to Log4j and it's uh, two successor like Logback and Log4j2, okay? So let's uh, talk about Apache Log4j. It's a very old logging framework and was the most powerful and popular one for several years. It introduced basic concepts like hierarchical log labels and loggers that are still used by modern logging frameworks. The development team announced Log4j's end of life in 2015, while quite a few legacy projects still use it you should prepare one of the other frameworks discussed in this session if you start a new project. So what are the required dependencies? If you want to use log4j in your application, you need to add log4j.jar file to your class path. You can see the required Maven dependencies in the uh, example given like this. Log4j doesn't support SLF4j natively. You also need to add the following dependencies to be able to use Log4j via the standardized interfaces. Configuring Log4j. In addition to the log4j.jar file, you need to define your appender and logger with the log labels in the log4j.property file. The appender writes the log messages to a destination such as a file or database. The logger and level define the granularity of log messages that are written to the log file. So the examples uh, uh, you, you can see here, 
like a typical log 4 j configuration for a development system of an application that uses Hibernate as an object relational mapper. It writes all log messages to the file app.log and sets the general log label to info. The configuration also sets the log labels of the logger like org.hibernate.sql to debug and the category org.hibernate.type.descriptor.sql to trace. These are two of the Hibernate loggers that write executed SQL statements and their bind parameter values to the configured file appender. So here is the example you can see, right? So based on the configuration, you can write your log messages using SLF4J API. That's all about uh, for uh, log4j now. So logback was written by the same developer who implemented log4j with the goal to become its successor. It follows the same concepts as uh, log4j but was rewritten to improve the performance to support SLF4j natively and to implement several other improvements like uh, advanced filtering options and automatic reloading of logging configurations. The framework consists of three parts, logback core, logback classic, and uh, logback access. Logback core provides the core functionality of the logging framework. Logback classic adds more features to the core functionality example like uh, native support for SLF4J. And logback access in integrates it with uh, sublet containers so that you can use it to write HTTP access logs. So what are the required dependencies? So you only need to define dependencies on logback classic. It transitively includes the dependencies to logback core and the SLF4J API. Configuring logback. Logback doesn't require any configuration by default. It writes all log messages in debug label or higher to standard out. Uh, you can change the uh, that with a custom configuration file in XML or Groovy format. Logback uses the same concepts as log4j, so it's no surprise that even if they are using different file format, their configuration are very similar. The following code uh, you can see shows the same configuration as I used with uh, log4j. So after you have added the required dependencies and the configured log pack, you can use it to write log messages via the SLF4j API. So if you want to benefit from the improvements provided by log pack, you don't need to change any code to replace log4j with log pack. So let's now talk about log4j2. So log4j2 is the youngest of these three frameworks and its goal is to improve on both of them by providing its own improvements on log4j, including some of the improvements included in logback and avoiding problems of log4j and logback. So like log, logback, log4j2 provides support for this log4j automatically reloads your logging configuration and supports advanced filtering options. In addition to these features, it also allows lazy evaluation of log statements based on lambda expressions, offers asynchronous loggers for lower latency systems, and provides a garbage-free mode to avoid any latency caused by garbage collector operations. So all these features make log4j2 the most advanced and the fastest of these three logging frameworks. What are the required dependencies? So log4j2 packages its API and implementation in two separate jar files. You can implement and build your application using log4j api.jar and you need to provide the additional log4j.jar log4j code.jar at runtime 
if you want to use SLF4J API, you also need to uh, need the log4j slf4 implementation jar file, which contains a breeze between the two APIs. So in this example, you can see how to configure that. And next, see about configuring log4j2. The configuration of log4j2 follows the same principles as the configuration of two previous logging frameworks and therefore it it will look pretty similar yeah so this is the example of how to configure it and let's uh, go to the conclusion log4j log back and log4j2 are good logging frameworks that are broadly used. So which one should we use? So we recommend using log4j2 because it's the fastest and most advanced of the three frameworks. Logback is still a good option if performance is not your highest priority. Please subscribe to this channel for the latest technology solutions and free tutorials. Thank you.